Well, good morning, Crosswinds Truckee. Welcome to everybody who's here, everybody online. Why don't we stand up and prepare to worship the Lord? Let's open in prayer. Heavenly Father, I know your word says, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. But Father, today it is more than that, Lord God. We are here with a hunger, Lord God. We are here with thankful hearts, Lord God, for everything that you've done for us, Lord God. We look for everything that you have for us, everything that Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit would bring, the power of God in our lives to pour out to others, Lord. This is what we ask for. This is what we cry out for, this desire for, because we know, God, you have promised us. We know that you have given it to us, Lord God. We give you the glory, the honor, and all the praise that our hearts can give. 
God is for us. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, if our God is for us, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand again? stuff that's standing against you, that things look look hopeless, or there's situations that we can't see answers for, that we don't know the future for, God, that we can rest in your truth, we can rest in his truth, that if he is for us, then who can stand against us, and we are, he is on our side as we worship him, as we lean into him, as we submit our lives and our wills to him, he is on our side, we are on his side, (laughs) and his side wins. God, so we thank you that you have answers, that you are the answer, that if today we're seeking for those answers, if we're looking, God, that we can find solace, that we can find peace in knowing that you have the answers, and no matter what it looks like in our our earthly eyes, that in the spiritual realm you're moving, that you have the answers, that you are guiding, and that you are directing our steps. So God, we just thank you. And if our God is for us, then who And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, sing it over yourself, declare it. The goodness of God. 
Come, Holy Spirit, we pray. We pray these things in your wonderful name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, we give God praise one more time. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, we like to do life here together, right? We do. So why don't you get out your rose right where you are, meet somebody, someone new, maybe you haven't met before, and just greet them in the name of the Lord. Welcome to the house.
Good morning, Crosswinds. By looking outside, Merry Christmas. <laughs> it's like another winter day, right? I promise you summer is one month away. I promise you, I promise you it's on the calendar, right? Has to be. But uh, we are so glad that you're here. Welcome here at Crosswinds. It's your first time. Welcome. If you don't know my, my name yet, my name is Pastor David Gregory. And it's my wife, Pastor Becky. Can you give the worship team a hand, please? You know, we don't, you don't, you, you, that was pretty much my whole family up there. It's not the Gregory show. We don't do that on purpose, but uh, it's, it's just good that we allow our children and any uh, young person just to, hey, if you want to use your talents for the Lord, go ahead. You know, this is freedom right here. We have students in the back and so uh, other students here who are working the sound equipment. So we're thankful for that we're raising up the next generation of young leaders in the kingdom, right? Someone that we've been praying for, and I've always said before, um, where we pray for our ceiling, that's going to be their floor, meaning that's where they start at. So if we've been praying for like things like revival and the move of the Holy Spirit, this is all they'll ever know. Like, and then, so we always go, why God, why God, why God? We might have those questions. And then they'll just say, why not, Lord? Why not? So that's a, a, a new movement of faith. And we're excited about what God has been doing. And again, if you are brand new here, we have just a way for you to get connected with us. It's so important that you do life together. It is not good to do life alone. In fact, it absolutely sucks doing life alone, right? So um, we want you to be connected with us. If you have questions about our church, you need prayer, for a specific prayer request, or you just want to get to know Pastor David and Becky, uh, we just have these cards in front of you, and you can fill that out, drop it in the black boxes at the back, or if you're tech savvy like me, scan the QR code right from your phone, and that's a way for us to get connected. And I want to say thank you so much for your great, awesome giving. Your generosity is really affecting missions around the world. World. We support lots of missions locally in this area, world missions, and we are a generous giving church. Amen? Amen. We are outside these walls. We're not, supposed to be, we're not supposed to stay in here. The Assembly of God is really a missions church, and that's who we are. Uh, and so uh, it's really important that you, that you give. If you haven't been a part of our giving team, there you go. So easy to do it. You pick your way on the screen for you. I'm not going to walk through it, but uh, just going through all these announcements because God has a word for us. But before we do, uh, Pastor Becky, why don't you share us just a little bit? What's going on with our right, ladies again. in our section? As David mentioned, we're part of the Summers of God. If you're joining us online and didn't know that, we are part of the Summers of God. Um, and we have our many, many churches in Northern California, Nevada, and we're all kind of together. Um, I am the, the leader for the sectional women's in our, so it's kind of like 21 churches kind of in the Northern Nevada up into where we are now in Truckee. Um, we are having a sectional meeting May 18th. We gather, we raise money for missions, which is awesome, and we have a good time together. There'll be food, there'll be worship. We have a guest speaker who's actually the pre new presbyter of our, our again, our, our area. <laughs> yeah. It's very confusing, all the terms, but it'll be a great time. We raise money, we worship, we have fun, we have food. Uh, May 18th, the tickets are $10. You can sign up in the front, you can scan the QR code, or you can come talk to me. There's handouts, um, and I'd love to see you come and join us. There you go. So, uh, ladies in the house, if you have that Saturday available, please make it your most important priority to go to go to this thing, okay? So, uh, 21 churches in our section. It's now Destiny Church's turn. So, Destiny Church is real close to downtown Reno. So, our section stretches from all the way to Round Mountain and Ely, Nevada. Where's Ely? That's exactly right. So, you don't know where Ely is? It's in the middle of nowhere all the way here. And we're the only church in our section that's in California. So, we bridge it, baby. So, that's, we are the bridge of that. So uh, go to that and uh, we want you to be blessed with it. And yeah, I don't have to do any more announcements on that one. Okay. You guys are uh, ready for the word of the Lord. Amen. I am too. And uh, if you were not here last week, boy, oh boy, did you miss something? You miss a mighty move of the Holy Spirit. What I love about it was that uh, to experience a mighty move of God, experience God fully, because that's our mission here. Crosswinds experience God be the church. And uh, it was not fabricated, not manufactured, not created. And we just sought the Lord. And a mighty move of the Holy Spirit was moved in our midst just last Sunday. 
And there was just, that's why we got rid of these pews a long time ago. So during worship or during any moment, you want to come up, lay down, come to the altar, just whatever. And that's what happened. At the very end of the service, we just sought the Lord together, just weeping and wailing and worshiping and, and crying. It's just God was moving in our hearts, you know. So we were just so thankful for that. And I believe God is stirring something new, something afresh and within his people, those who are hungering him and thirsting for him. Thirsting, I guess that's the word, right? <laughs> well, when's the last time we've gotten hungry for God? And that's what it takes. If you want to experience all of God, you've got to hunger for him. And, and that's been our ongoing prayer this entire past month and still going is come Holy Spirit. Will you all say that with me? Come Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, the person that Jesus sent us to be our helper and what we've been doing this whole past month, if you haven't been with us, we have been fixing and aligning our focus on Jesus. We're getting our hearts ready to receive the Holy Spirit. We are seeking more of the Spirit's power in our lives. And we're asking, oh Lord, will you fill us to overflow? And that's what we want. That's what we need. That's what he wants the church to do. So we've been praying We've been fasting as a church and saying, hey, for, the 50, for 50 days, since from, from Easter all the way to the day of Pentecost and, and later in this month, we've been fasting one meal a day. And during that time, just seek the Lord. You're reading your word, the word of God, praying. And we've been having prayer points and so we can stay in focus. And we're giving up our own appetite of food and have an appetite for the Lord. And so that's what I've been doing, still charging us to do that. And I know God's been speaking to my heart. So I've gotten a lot closer in my prayer life. So this is what it takes to do this. And today I want to share with you a word about being activated. Activated by God. Because as believers in Christ, and hear me, every person who follows Jesus, we are meant to walk a spirit-filled life. And you can still go to heaven having Jesus in your heart and never walk a spirit-filled life. That, that is not a salvation issue. But if you want more of God, and it's throughout the entire Bible, talks about the Holy Spirit being a first deposit. You get the Holy Spirit at salvation. But if you want more, then you are allowed to have more. In fact, you are meant to receive more so that the church can be Christ to the world. And it takes power to do that. We are meant for intimacy. We are meant for an anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I want to talk about that activated. But before we go into it, I want to share just a little funny story I read this past week. It was about a guy who was praying every single morning. And he said, oh, Lord, if you want me to witness to somebody today, to tell them about Jesus Please give me a sign to show me who it is. So he prays that every morning and on his normal day, he's going to work. He's on the bus on his way to work. And this particular day, a big burly man gets on the bus and sits right next to him in his seat. Now, the bus was nearly empty, but this guy sat next to this praying man. Now, you got this timid Christian just anxiously now, like, what in the world's going on here? I want to get off the bus. I really want to get out of this situation. This is really awkward, right? He's just waiting for his exit. But before he could get very nervous about the man right next to him, the big guy just bursts into tears and just begins to weep. And right in the seat, just loud enough for a few people around him, if, if there were any people around him, but he just begins to shout in a loud voice, I need to be saved. I'm a lost sinner. I need the Lord. Won't somebody tell me, anybody tell me how to be saved? And he turns to this Christian. He didn't know who, from anywhere. And he pleads, sir, can you show me how I can be saved by God? And the believer immediately bows his head and he prays, Oh Lord, is this a sign? 
<laughs> That's a funny story. <laughs> You think about, oh, we're looking for signs, right? Like, oh, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And there it is, right? Well, we know Jesus said in this word, right before he goes to heaven, he says in Matthew 28, he says, go and make disciples. Go out and find people to follow me. And as we've been studying this on Wednesday night uh, series, and we're coming to a close on it this Wednesday, but we're talking about that. Like, it, it really means what Jesus meant. As you are going out and doing life, go make disciples. As you're at the store, as you're at the restaurant and everything. So it's not really a lot of thinking to go to it. As you go, go make. And so today I want to share with you the power of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, the whole point of this, why? Why do we need the Holy Spirit's power? Why do we need to have the Holy Spirit come upon us it has to do with being activated. So let me share with you the key verse that Jesus said to us before he ascended to heaven in Acts 1.8. He says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And we've been breaking this verse all apart. And today I want to, sh- I want to talk about the next few words that he said. And you will be my witnesses. So we're going to talk about what this means. And why we need the Holy Spirit. Because every believer who has been filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, if you're old-fashioned like I was, you know, if you, if you have the Holy Spirit come upon you, then it must mean that you must desire proximity of the Holy Spirit for your witness. If you don't know what that word is, it's closeness. I want to be close to the Holy Spirit. Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit many times with his followers. Talked about the person of the Holy Spirit. Talked about why the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do? And what does he do? What does he do? And so John 15, 26 through 27, if you look at Jesus' words, he's talking to his disciples and he says, When the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, namely the Spirit of truth, that's the Holy Spirit, who comes from the Father, he will testify about me. And you are testifying as well. So you see what the, what the job of the Holy Spirit does? He testifies about Jesus, and through us, he testifies as well. And so that is what witnessing is. Just think about going to a court. You know, if you've ever been in court, that is a horrible place to go to. But think about and this is a nice way, Okay. You are a witness. You saw something happen. And the Holy Spirit, when he comes upon us, he testifies for us who Jesus is to the world. It's all done by the Holy Spirit. And you think, what does the Holy Spirit do? What does he do when he's testifying? Well, in the next chapter, Jesus talks about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. In John 16, 7 through 8, Jesus said, but I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I am leaving. I know we want to have Jesus here. You know, we wish we were in that era, but no, it's to our advantage. Because he said, if I do not leave, the helper will not come to you. Remember who the helper is? The Holy Spirit. But if I go, I will send him to you. And he, when he comes, will convict the world. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He calls out sin, calls out righteousness, and he calls people to to righteousness and judgment as well. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus called the Holy Spirit the helper. He's our helper. The Holy Spirit is to help the believers in Christ in their own ministry. Remember when I said this probably last week or a couple weeks ago, I can't remember. But Jesus knew the Holy Spirit would be the start and the strength of the church. You cannot do this on your own. You must have the Holy Spirit to help you. So here is Jesus. Let's think about it for a moment. Jesus is meeting with his disciples. And before he goes to heaven, he says, don't leave Jerusalem. Wait for the Holy Spirit. You need him. 
He's going to help you. And then when he ascends into heaven, you read later on in Acts chapter 1 what all the, the believers in Christ did. They went to an upper room, and the Bible says they joined together constantly in prayer. Now let's talk about that. They joined together constantly in prayer. Everyone was there. And the Bible says that disciples were there. Mary, Jesus' mother, was there. All of Jesus' brothers were there. And they did this every day to have close proximity with the Holy Spirit. They hungered for the promise, for the help of the Holy Spirit. They thirsted for a move of the Holy Spirit on them as Jesus promised. Now, you got to know that the Holy Spirit had not even been poured out yet. Who in the world knows what this is going to look like? Well, we do. You know, we can just turn the page. You know, here's Acts chapter 2, you know. But they don't know. What does this look like? They have no idea what it will be like for the Holy Spirit to come on you. But they did know about the intimacy of the Holy Spirit. They did know about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. They know who Elijah is. They do know who Elisha, the double portion guy, is. They do know who Moses is. They know the history of God moving in people. And now they're beginning to understand the words. The Holy Spirit's power is needed for their witness, as Jesus promised. So we must be close to the Holy Spirit. So here they are. They're praying together in the upper room. You got to imagine, and I don't like to put my own words into the Bible, but I'm trying to try to put myself into their shoes a little bit. Imagine what the prayers were like. Oh, Lord, we need help. Because we don't know what a church looks like, right? I don't know what a church is. I know it's people, but what does it look like for a church, a people of God moving with the Holy Spirit? Oh, Lord, there's a world out there in sin, and they need to be convicted of it. They need to know that Jesus is the Savior of sin. And we need, to, I know we've been commanded to go and make disciples. So the prayer had to be, oh, come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, whatever Jesus you have promised for all of us, bring him. So they pray every day together. Think about it. Every day, constantly, together. It would look like for us, we have church tomorrow night. Then we have church on Tuesday night. Then we have church on Wednesday, then Thursday, then Friday, then Saturday, and Sunday, and Monday, and Tuesday. And you come, Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit. And you hear those times uh, in history because when revival hit, the church could not stop meeting. They have to meet. They want to meet. They desire proximity with the Holy Spirit. So let's answer, let's answer these questions. Are the disciples and everybody there who are praying constantly every single day in the upper room are they hungry for God? Yes, they are. Don't they desire the same intimacy and anointing of the Holy Spirit? Yes, they do. They must. They're focused on the Holy Spirit, on the helper for the church. And in the same way as followers of Christ, if you're following Jesus, we are to pray intimately. We are to pray constantly. And we are to pray together, Holy Spirit, come. If you want power, you want signs, you want God to move in wonders, miracles, and do what Jesus said, greater works will you do because I am going to the Father, I'm sending you the Holy Spirit. If you want the greater works that God is going to do, it starts with prayer. It's seeking his face, hard, going after him, hungering, thirsting. Like, I, I need air, I need water, I need this to live. We have to desire proximity of the Holy Spirit for our witness. And another thing about the empowered believer 
is that when you are when the Holy Spirit comes on you, it's because they have taken priority in the Holy Spirit. They made the Holy Spirit their priority for their witness. I'm going back to that story with the man on the bus. I was just thinking about that, you know. This guy been praying on this bus every single day to share Jesus to somebody. And then this big guy sits right next to him. Like 20 seats is around him. You can say anywhere. Sits right there. And what did he want to do? I just want to get off the bus. I want to get off the bus. This is so weird. Oh, gosh. He's hairy. Oh, my gosh. He's, oh. <laughs> He's just, oh, what am I doing here? Oh, no. Why this day, you know? And when the opportunity presents itself that he could follow Jesus right now, what does the man pray? Lord, get me out of this. <laughs> I don't want any part of this. Lord, is this you? I don't know. <laughs> he had no problem being a disciple of Jesus, but he does with making disciples for Jesus because he did not have the Holy Spirit's power. He didn't have the influence of the Holy Spirit. He did not make the Holy Spirit priority in his life. So many times throughout the Bible, priority is there. If you look at so many scriptures, I'm not going to throw them up here, but I'll, but I'll just share some of them. Maybe you know some of these verses already. But look throughout the entire Bible. You see that God puts his people on priority. You ever heard of this verse that Jesus said? But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and then all these things will be given to you. Matthew 6, 33. The psalmist David, he said, so, number, so teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Number the days. Get on priority. Colossians 3, 2. We shared this in our pre-service prayer. He said, set your minds on the things that are above and not on the things that are on the earth. Where's priority at? Here, not here. So God makes it really clear in his word, we must be people of priority. Right? We need to ask ourselves, is Jesus and his mission our top priority? So why would we make the Holy Spirit our priority? So Christ can be shown to the world. Not only does power of the Holy Spirit greatly add to us, we're talking about like healing. When I'm going out and I see someone in pain, in the Holy Spirit, I know he sent me here, and I pray for healing for this person. I'm asking for a mighty move of God to be in this person's life. But not only am I supposed to do this, the Holy Spirit greatly adding to me in this way, but the Spirit of God also gives me in you the words to say in your testimony as you're witnessing. That's exactly what Jesus said. Matthew 13, 11, his words, do not worry beforehand about what you are to say. But whatever is given you, but but whatever is given you at that time. You ever wondered how you're gonna work, how in the world are you gonna witness to a neighbor or a friend or someone at work? I don't know what I'm gonna say. You know, like how am I gonna bring Jesus into this? Oh, you know, don't worry about this. Jesus, well, why am I not going to worry about this, Lord? Because I, I'm, I'm trying to pray out to get off the bus here. You know, <laughs> I, I'm in this situation. It's really getting awkward. No, Jesus says, for you are not the one speaking, but it is the Spirit. There's a reason why we need the Holy Spirit. He's the helper. This is power from the Holy Spirit. It's not just demonstration of the kingdom. It's not just signs, wonders, miracles, and, and power and everything in this way, although we really want to see that, but power of the Holy Spirit is also in the very words we speak. Doesn't that sound familiar when God spoke everything into creation? There's power when the Holy Spirit is added to us. Power is meant for on our tongue as well. It's not just in healing. He's meant to do something inside of us. It's demonstration of the kingdom of God as well as proclamation. 
And this only comes with proximity. And this only comes with priority. We must make the Holy Spirit our priority. The Spirit of God wants to use us fully. And we talked about last week. Remember this guy named Stephen, right? The Bible says that Stephen was full of the Holy Spirit. We already talked, talked about it. That, that meant he was complete in the Spirit. He was abounding in the Spirit. And he was just a regular guy. There's nothing special about Stephen at all. He was doing signs. He was doing wonders. He was being bold. He was powerful in his words and everything. He wasn't special. He's just a guy. He made the Holy Spirit, though, his priority. And he was close. And believe it or not, it is not Pastor David's job to do this by himself. The Bible does not say in... What is that? But you shall receive the you shall see, receive power from the Holy Spirit when He comes upon the pastors. He doesn't say that. It was the believers who were listening at the moment. Every person, if you are a believer in Christ, you are meant for power. You are meant for signs and wonders and power and things as well as the preaching part or the proclamation or sharing a testimony of Christ. Oh, no, I leave that to the pastor. Wrong. You're wrong. And I don't have a problem telling you you're wrong because that's the Holy Spirit convicting all of us because I wrestle with this thing, okay? If you are in Christ, be filled because you are meant to overflow. You are hindering the Spirit. You're hindering the mission of Jesus if you don't tap into this. You're just tapping out. All it takes is just a regular person who desires closeness to the Spirit, who focuses on the mission of Christ to see people. I want to see people healed, I want to see people delivered. I want to to see people set free from their sin, and they make the relationship with the Holy Spirit their top priority. After 50 days of fasting, they keep going because they love them. They need a move of the Holy Spirit. I think it's so good that we do this again one more time from last week. I want to show you a biblical example of this in a man named Peter. Go down, wrong way. Peter had proximity, he had priority, and that meant power of the Holy Spirit. So what do we know about Peter? You ever heard of him before? Yeah. He's uh, the first disciple of Jesus. His career path was a fisherman. It's not really an amazing career, you know. I mean, we love fishermen. We need fishermen. I love fish. I love all the seafood. Thankful for fishermen. But he's just a regular guy. He's not the son of God. <laughs> he's, he's just a regular guy. And he is called by Jesus to come follow him. And he follows Jesus for about three years. And near the end of Jesus' life, when Jesus is being arrested, this regular guy denies Jesus three times. We all fail, don't we? And after Jesus dies on the cross, what does Peter do? The Bible says, He goes back to fishing. Three years, doing everything, denies him three times, goes back to fishing. Jesus comes back to life. And Jesus wants to meet with Peter. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. And when when Jesus meets Peter, he asks Peter, do you love me more than these? And I imagine he's holding up a fish. Do you love me more than this? Well, yeah. Do you love me more than these? Yeah, he asked him three times, and I believe he asked him three times because he denied him three times. This is his way of confessing and repenting, I choose you. And then Jesus reinstates Peter. Okay. 
then feed my sheep. Go and make disciples. And now Peter is in the upper room that we're talking about earlier. Every day with other believers, praying together constantly. And you flip the page in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit is poured out on the day of Pentecost. Peter is baptized in the Holy Spirit's power and fire. And you see this fire take off. And the Holy Spirit radically changes this regular guy's life. The witnessing power is activated. You see the ministry start to take place. Now we see the Holy Spirit working in Peter's life because he's close to the Holy Spirit and he's made him priority. So let's have a little fun with this. Let's go through Peter's life now. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, he now, Peter begins to speak in tongues as the Spirit enables him. Acts chapter 2, verse 14, Peter stands up boldly, shy Peter, to address the crowd in his witness. Acts chapter 2, verse 15 through 41, he preaches with great power and 3,000 people are saved in one day. Acts chapter 2, verse 43, we see that Peter performs signs and wonders. Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10, we see that Peter heals a crippled man at the gate. Acts chapter 4, verses 1 through 22, he speaks boldly before the Sanhedrin's objections because he did a miracle. And then you see in Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 10, he calls out two people, Ananias and Sapphira, because they were disobedient to the Lord. He calls them out. The Spirit lays them out dead. Acts chapter 5, verses 12 through 16, again, he starts doing mighty miracles with the Holy Spirit. And even his shadow, walking past people, the shadow heals people. Not his shadow, but it's the Holy Spirit anointing on Peter's life. Acts chapter 8, verses 14 through 17, Peter lays hands on believers, and they receive the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit is being activated and multiplied at the same time. Acts chapter 9, verses 32 through 35, he heals a man named Aeneas who couldn't even walk. Acts chapter 9, verses 36 through 42, a woman named Tabitha is dead, and he raises her back to life. Acts chapter 10, verses 9 through 48, the whole time the Holy Spirit speaks to him in a mighty vision for the church. In Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 19, he's stuck in prison because he's arrested for preaching, and God sends an angel to break him out of prison. Can we agree that this regular guy, Peter, had proximity and priority with the Holy Spirit? Can we agree that he had power? He did. The same guy who denied Jesus three times and cowered in fear. The same guy who felt ineffective and incompetent to keep going. He went back to fishing. But once he was consumed by the Holy Spirit... He was activated. He was a living powerhouse of God's miracles and truth. He became bold. He became powerful. He was consistent. And he was filled with joy. We are meant to be activated. I think we're like sleeper agents of the kingdom. Just waiting for a call. Activate me when you're ready. That comes when the call is in prayer constantly. Holy Spirit wants to activate us. The prayer we must have. Come, Holy Spirit, because there's more. And if everyone is activated... Revival. This is simple. So easy. You don't craft it. You don't create it. You don't, you can't do that. Don't fake this stuff. You watch the things on YouTube, online, and everything like that. It, it, it can't, there's some of the things are authentic and real, but a lot of it is performance and stuff like that. It's, it's just seeking the Lord. That's all it is. I want to be close. And I make you number one. Pray constantly. Activate me. And once you're activated, the fear of the workplace to talk to people, that's gone. 
you're on fire, baby. You're on fire. As you're going, and you can't wait to get out of your house because you are making followers of Christ. You're preaching about Jesus. You're talking about it. You're talking about him, how good he is and everything. Then they, I don't know about that. Well, oh, yeah, I see that you brought a cane today. I want to show you something. And then you pray in the mighty name of Jesus and they heal to go, okay, explain that one. Oh, yeah, you can't explain it. Who did that? Jesus. And this is the demonstration matching with proclamation. It only happens if we're activating. Amen? Let's do this. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. Let's pray. So, God, I thank you for your word. I thank you, God, that the Holy Spirit is meant to empower all of us to advance the kingdom of God. I thank you, Lord God, that we are meant for more than what we are walking in right now. I know we are meant for more than what we are believing in. We are meant for more than what we are trusting in. We are meant for more than how we are behaving. So God, we right now, we open up to you, fully surrender, and we pray hard, constantly, come Holy Spirit. Here we are in this room. It's not an upper room, but here we are in this room. We need a mighty move of the Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. And I pray right now, Jesus, that you speak to everyone's hearts, everyone's ears who heard the word of the Lord. God, I pray a drawing closer to you. While everyone's heads are bowed and their eyes are closed, I want to bring an opportunity for those in this room and those joining us online. If you need Jesus, and you do, then put your faith and trust in him. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to become the Lord and Savior of your life because I want you, and he wants you, especially to go to heaven. He wants you to have life abundantly in his name. And he wants to set you free. It's time to let go of yourself and surrender to him. So I want to do this so simply. I'm going to help pray with you. And if that's you today, will you just look up and say, Pastor David, all I'm doing, I'm looking up and I want to ask you to help me to pray with me. I want to ask Jesus in my heart and life. Anybody in this room? If I see your eyes, I'll say, thank you. Put your eyes back down, okay? I trust you're all believers. And now those online, watching us online, you need Jesus. Will you right now and just nod your head? Okay, I need Jesus. Pastor David, will you pray with me? Okay, we're gonna pray together. I can't see you, you know that, but God sees you in your faith and your heart. And now we're going to ask in the mighty name of Jesus to save us. Me, the whole church is gonna pray with you. Repeat after me, dear Lord Jesus, I confess I am a sinner. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you did die on the cross for my sins. I believe God raised you from the dead. And I believe that you can be my Savior. And I make you mine now. Please forgive me my sins. You are my Lord, my Savior, my best friend. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, I'm going to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Church, will you please stand up right on your feet, please? Stand up right, on your, right where you are. And we're going to pray in this way. We have been talking about these 50 days of fasting, and we need to have our hearts lined up and praying in these ways. So as you are going home today, we want you to, this week, pray in these ways, okay? So if you have a smartphone, get it out. This is the, when does the church ever tell you to get your smartphone out? Oh, this is it. Take a picture of this because you need this as your fuel. This is going to be our focus together. We're going to be scattered outside these walls and we're going to pray in this way. And we're going to do this. We're going to pray individually in these areas. And so let's do this. Let's read it. Deep relationship. Everybody say deep relationship. This is where we're going after the Holy Spirit in such an intimate way. We must be close to the Spirit. We must surrender ourselves to His work. It's not our work. We're just available. And so Jesus, He prayed in the Spirit. Jesus walked in the Spirit. He lived by the Spirit. 
and by the Spirit, the church is powerful. Greater works shall you do because I'm sending you the helper. Can we just do that right now? Lift up your hands. Lift up your faith. Let's pray right now for a deep relationship. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. We seek your face. We seek you. We, speak, we seek the Spirit of the Lord to be our helper. First of all, God, we just ask for an intimate relationship once again, a deeper place that we can ever go. God, we pray not for the signs and wonders and miracles right now. We just simply pray a proximity, a closeness of the Spirit of the Lord where I can so clearly hear your voice like you're speaking to me in my ear and my heart so easily I can understand you. And it comes with a deep relationship. God, we hunger, we thirst for you, we need you. And we pray, oh God, that you would just give us an intimacy with the Holy Spirit. We crave you. We need you. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Everybody say urgency. We pray for an urgency of a move of the Holy Spirit. We must make the Holy Spirit our top priority. King David was a man after God's own heart. And he said in his psalm, God, do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. It's Jesus or nothing, church. It's him or nothing. I don't want to live in between. I make him first in my life. Can we do that right now? If you have any kind of uh, things are blocking your way, if you're just so distracted with the worries of this world or just doubts or fears or whatever it is, lay it at the feet of the cross and give it to Jesus and make him priority. Let this be an urgent moment right now. Come Holy Spirit, we pray for an urgency, a move in my heart for making you first in my lives. God, I pray, oh God, that you would just not, you would help me to go after you every single day, praying constantly in the shower, in the car, at the dinner table, at my bedside, everywhere I go, I make you priority. And that's when I do this, when I make proximity and I make priority of the Holy Spirit, that's when you release everything you have for me. You said, oh God, that you wanted to us to receive the power from the Holy Spirit. So I receive you now. I lift up the lid off my jar and fill me up. God, we pray. This is urgent. I need it now. Lord God, come. Come, Holy Spirit. We need a mighty move today. Today, Lord. And everybody say activation. This is when we need to pray right now for the Holy Spirit to activate you in His power. Many of you don't even know what that is. You've never experienced him like this, but you know the stories. You've looked at all throughout the word of God. You've seen God move in people. You probably know people who have been moved and anointed of the Holy Spirit, but it's meant for all. Jesus makes us powerful witnesses in his name. The Holy Spirit will give you the words that you need to speak today. The Holy Spirit will give you boldness to proclaim the gospel. The Holy Spirit will give you power and strength to do the supernatural. And all of the reasons, because I want to be his witness. Come on, Holy Spirit. Come on, will you just lift up your hands and just pray. Oh God, will you activate us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray. Activate us in a new way. Come refreshing for our renewal. Revive us, oh Lord. We are sleeper agents in the kingdom in a sense. But God, we pray for a mighty move, the Holy Spirit. Send power. We pray that it be like a Peter. We're just regular people. We've, we've fallen. We've come short. We've denied you. We've done these things. But when we are activated by the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit comes on us, we know all hell cannot break loose. Oh, God, we pray that our power of our witness on our tongue and the demonstration of the kingdom of God, let it be so in the name of Jesus. And may you get all the glory. Every bit of it, Lord, this is for you. Activate your church. Every church who is proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ, the gospel message, may they be activated with a move of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. This is how we end today, but it's not just, we're not going to just end it. 
We need to move the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Let it go, church. Just let go all the fears and doubts and everything. Just let him have his way in you. Be open. Surrender to him. Thank you, Jesus. Friends, we're not going to dismiss in a formal way at all. What we are going to do is turn down these lights and we're going to pray just like they did in the upper room before the Holy Spirit fell. 